I've had my Canon R6 Mark II now for about a month and my Canon EOS R for about 18 months and I've just paired them together to shoot a wedding. How did it go? Which camera actually performed better? And which camera did I actually prefer using overall? Is the R6 Mark II worth over double the price nearly? Let's find out. As a lot of you already know, the Canon EOS R is a little bit outdated now, coming up to about five years since it was actually released. And it is lacking in a lot of features, especially for the video side in 2023. And that is actually one of the main reasons why I actually brought the Canon R6 Mark II because I wanted the better video features and just a better photography features overall. However, some of the features in the R6 Mark II actually might not be beneficial to you and you might actually be better off buying the Canon EOS R for a lot cheaper price because it still is an amazing photography camera. However, if you actually want some of the best in the market features, it might be actually be a better choice to go with the Canon R6 Mark II. So at the wedding, the majority of the day, I used either the 35mm f1.8 or the 50mm 1.8 with the Canon EOS R and I did also use these lenses as well with the Canon R6 Mark II but I mainly use the 7200 on the R6 Mark II for the whole day but with these two lenses I absolutely love using these lenses anyway and for the majority of the time I did actually use my R6 Mark II mainly because I just enjoyed it more overall in my user experience and we'll get into that in a little bit why in a second but another reason why I actually wanted to use the R6 Mark II more is because I just preferred a 7200 and I wanted my better camera basically with the 7200 and also is that it actually has two SD card slots versus the Canon EOS R's one SD card slot and straight away if you actually are a wedding photographer or a videographer then you already know two SD card slots is crucial and you just want that ease of mind when you are shooting in case anything fails so but beware if you are shooting weddings or anything like that with the EOS R because it has only got one SD card slot we're gonna go through some of the specs of the R6 Mark II and the Canon EOS R for photography first so the R6 Mark II has a 24.2 megapixel sensor and the EOS R actually has more megapixels with its 30 point I think 2 megapixel sensor as well so this camera can produce some stunning images I've got to admit and I do love the photos that come out of it however some of the features are just a lot further behind than the ones on the Canon R6 Mark II especially the autofocus and also the high speed continuous shooting so if you are like a sports photographer a wedding photographer anything that shoots either high speed uh, action and if you want to be using autofocus to track either animals people people's eye very very well we'll get into in a sec and also like cars some of the positives of the canon eos r that i like over the r6 mark ii which there isn't many to be fair to me but it actually might be for you so first obviously the sensor is probably more suited to landscape photographers if you're like a landscape photographer or even like a product photographer you don't need crazy autofocus you don't need low megapixels you'd actually prefer more and you don't really need high speed burst mode because you're just shooting either one photo for landscapes or just one photo for products so i would say if you are one of them photographers mainly or you want to get into them like if you actually want to specialize in that then maybe it is the better choice to go for the eos r because it's just a lot cheaper than the r6 mark ii especially if you're not into video either then I actually think the EOS R is actually a better choice because I don't think the features in the R6 Mark II is going to benefit you so much to actually be spending that extra thousand pounds. So this camera actually might be all you need. Another thing that I love about the Canon EOS R that I actually miss on the R6 Mark II is the top LCD screen. I don't actually use it that much to be fair for like checking settings or anything but the only time I actually do use it is when I actually want to check the charge on my battery. I know it sounds a little bit weird but if I'm not sure what my battery charge is I'll just put it into the camera and turn it on and it will tell me instantly at the top. But to actually check on the R6 Mark II I've got to open the actual screen and just check on there. I know it sounds stupid but I actually really love that about the top LCD screen and if you actually do like it and use it quite a lot then you probably will miss it too. However to actually change the modes on the actual top dial on the R6 Mark II I think is so much better than pressing the mode button and then swiping through mainly because you can see everything already on the top whereas on the LCD screen you can only see one mode unless you actually switch to change it. However there's so many more better features for photos on the R6 Mark II than the Canon EOS R that if you're not a landscape photographer and you're a wedding photographer, if you're a portrait photographer, sports photographer, the R6 Mark II might be for you mainly because of these amazing features that we're going to get into now. So the R6 Mark II can shoot up to 12 frames per second in the mechanical shutter and 40 frames per second in the electronic shutter versus I think this can only go up to like 6 frames per second and when you actually do put it in high speed mode on the Canon EOS R, one 
it actually gets into, I think, speed priority over tracking priority. So if you do put it in tracking priority and you actually can't go up to six frames per second, it's more like, I think, three or four. So when you actually do um, bump it up to the high speed mode, you actually don't get tracking priority. So the autofocus actually gets worse when you're in that mode. So again, for high speed action, this camera is not very good at all. Talking about the shutter even more, if you do actually want tracking priority, you have to go into like the medium, like low speed continuous, which is like, like I said, three to four, I think frames per second. But if you actually are in that mode, for some reason you cannot turn on the silent shutter and the actual shutter and the mechanical shutter in this camera is very, very loud for some reason, especially compared to the R6 Mark II. I didn't really notice it until I got the R6 Mark II to actually how much quieter it is over the Canon EOS R. And obviously, if you're in a wedding ceremony and everyone's quiet and they're walking down the aisle, you're going to want to go in silent shutter mode. And if you actually want to go in silent shutter mode, you're going to have to go into the high speed continuous or single shooting. And then if you do go into high speed continuous, you don't have tracking priority. So again, the autofocus is nowhere near as good and you actually might miss a lot of the shots. So this is actually obviously a really bad thing, especially for weddings, to be honest, because it was actually really annoying, but I did have to put it in silent shutter mode because how loud it actually is. Getting onto the autofocus, yes, this does have eye track. However, the ergonomics actually play a big part with the autofocus because I've actually mapped the back of the R6 Mark II's button to whenever I press the AF on button, it actually latches straight onto the eye and you can also change which eye you want and you can easily change to the other person and actually track their eye as well it's just so simple so you can either have the one using the joystick on the back to actually move your focus point or if you press the af on that's when it attaches straight onto the eye and it's basically the best of both worlds i can have eye tracking or i can just focus wherever i want with the joystick you can focus where you want with the back of the lcd screen i've actually mapped this to the top right however it's a lot further over than the joystick on the canon eos r and it just doesn't feel as good as the joystick either also it's just such wasted space having the touchpad on the top I've disabled this because I used to have it as ISO, but the amount of times I'd accidentally scrub my finger over the top of it and it would increase my ISO or decrease it was getting really annoying, so I've just turned it off. So it's literally just a wasted space now and that'll be a perfect place for like a joystick to move your AF button on because sometimes using the screen is not the best, but it's there if you actually do want to use it. Also, the autofocus in the R6 Mark II is the same as the Canon R3s, which is probably the best autofocus in the market at the moment. It also has a Digit X processor and this only has a Digic 8 I think it is so it's just nowhere near as good as auto focusing and every time I actually did use this camera at the wedding on Saturday I just didn't find it as good to use I actually found it really annoying because of the touchpad because there's no joystick and because there's no wheel the autofocus weren't as good either and obviously the high speed mode with the tracking priority all of that I had to watch out what I was using and it just didn't feel as good to use the user experience was nowhere near as fun and I just mainly prefer the R6 Mark II which is why I just basically use that for the whole day overall I just prefer the Canon R6 Mark II way more than the Canon EOS R talking more about the ergonomics is for photos in general is not that big a deal because once you're in photo mode you're in photo mode but for like hybrid shooters the ergonomics is really annoying because to actually change from photo to video mode you have to press the mode button then the info button on the back then the mode button again on the r6 mark ii it's just the one switch at the top left corner where the on button is on the eos r and it's literally within an instant and it's so fast and easy also on the r6 mark ii you can do it completely one-handed if you want because the on button is on the right side so what you have to do is swipe your finger over the top and the camera's on or off on the eos r you actually basically have to use your second arm to actually turn it on so if you've got anything else in your hand like a gimbal or just a bag or anything you can't turn it on with just one hand and it's actually really annoying unless like you hold it on your chest and you move over and you turn it on but that's just so awkward so the ergonomics overall on the canon r6 mark ii is way better than the canon eos r now for the video features as well this is where this camera separates in quality a lot from the r6 mark ii because the r6 mark ii does just crush it in every way in the video apart from one feature to be fair and i actually wish the canon r6 mark ii actually had this feature and basically that's all i so the canon r6 mark ii does not shoot all i it only shoots ipb and ipb compressed but this shoots in all i in 4k and also 1080p which is basically it gathers all the information and it doesn't compress it in camera so basically the r6 mark ii does actually compress the video files a little bit because it can't shoot all i which is a little bit annoying and i hope in a first 
firmware update in the future, they actually do add that. So that's actually one good thing of the video features on the Canon EOS R. Also the 50 frames per second in 1080p is actually really nice in this as well if you're not bothered about 4K. So you're gonna get some really nice quality in 1080p because at the end of the day, 1080p is still 1080p. Still not bad quality just because 4K exists. However, the Canon R6 Mark II can shoot 4K up to 50 frames per second in C-Log3, 10-bit 422, and the Canon EOS R can shoot 4K, but it's got like a 1.8 times crop, so it's not full frame at all. It's actually like more of a crop than APS-C, so it's actually really annoying when you are using it for 4K, and you can only go up to 30 frames per second in it as well with a 30 limit record limit. The Canon R6 Mark II does, has, does not have any record limit at all in 25p, and it only has, I think it's a two hour record limit in 50 frames per second, uh, but I think it starts overheating at around 40 minutes anyway. For interviews, for ceremonies, anything like that, no record limit on the Canon R6 Mark II. It's a huge win over the Canon EOS R because that record limit is really annoying to actually have to turn in the record button on every 29 minutes and 59 seconds. Also, the R6 Mark II can shoot 1080p up to 180 frames per second versus the Canon EOS R can only shoot 120 frames per second in or 100 frames per second in 720p. So I just avoid that mode at all because I just don't think the 720p quality looks nice at all. So obviously for super slow-mo, the R6 Mark II absolutely crushes the EOS R because it's in 1080p. Shooting C-Log3 over C-Log as well, I think that gives it some more dynamic range. And now with the brand new update in the Ninja Atomos firmware, you can shoot 6K RAW up to 50 frames per second with the R6 Mark II using the Ninja Atomos external recorder. So if you do wanna shoot RAW, you have the ability to if you have the money and also if you have the storage space with the R6 Mark II versus not on the Canon EOS R. Again, the autofocus in the R6 Mark II for video is great and it's so much better than the Canon EOS R because again, you can pick which eye you want. It tracks onto the eye so well and it's just absolutely amazing what you can actually do with the R6 Mark II for the price. Even though all these features are amazing in the Canon R6 Mark II for the photo features, high speed mode, great autofocus, amazing video, 10 bit over 8 bit as well, 4K, no crop, all of that. It still doesn't mean the EOS R is a bad camera at all. You can still get amazing quality pictures out of this camera and videos, like I said, in 1080p, 50 frames per second, or if you can deal with the crop in 4K because it does have the all eye codec. And that just makes this camera obviously really nice to actually get some really good content. You do just have to have a lot of sacrifices in speed, autofocus, and a lot of video features that doesn't reach the industry standard in 2023. Obviously, it's coming in if you find it used somewhere about £1,400. It is coming in at like half the price of the Canon R6 Mark II. Is it actually worth a double the price over the Canon EOS R? In my opinion, yes. The R6 Mark II was one of the best purchases I've ever made. I absolutely love it so far and I've only had it a month. I love my Canon EOS R so much. It's what got me into YouTube. It's what got me into filming weddings, shooting weddings and shooting real estate. It's basically what started my career in all of this and I just, I do love it so much. However, it was holding me back in a lot of things. And it, even though I got the job done filming a whole wedding with this camera, it was starting to get a little bit annoying with the ergonomics, with the AF, with the bad 4K, really bad super slow-mo. I wanted all these features and I got these features now on the R6 Mark II. And the R6 Mark II is one of the best cameras you can actually buy on the market at the moment. So if you can afford it, as long as you can get brilliant, amazing, good glass with it, don't buy the R6 Mark II if you're gonna get crap glass. You'll actually be better off buying the EOS R and buying really good glass like the 70 to 200 up here, like the 35 mil f1.8 here, like a 16 to 35 what I'm shooting on here for the EF, you're much better off buying the EOS R and buying brilliant lenses over buying the R6 Mark II and buying really cheap, terrible glass because it is gonna make a huge difference and it's actually more important to get really good glass than it is to buy a camera. Even if you are thinking about buying the R after this video, I've gotta say as well, watch a video or look at some research on the Canon R8 because it's around the same price as the Canon EOS R, but it has the exact same features as the Canon R6 Mark II. So if you do want the R6 Mark II's features, but you don't want to spend money to get it, then your best choice is to get the Canon R8. However, there's still only one SD card slot like in the EOS R. There's no IBIS. I completely forgot to mention that as well. There's IBIS in the R6 Mark II and there's not IBIS in the EOS R. So for video, handheld video, it's so much better. So if you do want IBIS as well, R6 Mark II is just the better choice overall. However, like I was mentioned with the R8, you don't get IBIS in that camera. 
and you also get the RP's batteries. So they're not even as good batteries as the Canon EOS R's. So they will actually last not a long time. I think if you're shooting in like 4K 50p, because it's no crop, 10 bit 42, the exact same as the R6 Mark II's, then you only get like an hour per battery, then you've got to buy the batteries for it. So full frame, it's just got the R6 Mark II's features. So if you do like the Canon EOS R, then your best choice actually might be to buy the Canon R8 instead. Again, it's still got, I think, 24 megapixels over the 30 megapixels. So it's up to you what you actually prefer. But at the end of the day, if you are going for the US R, think again, and maybe you should go for the R8. If you don't want the R8 and you want the bigger batteries and you want the top LCD screen and you want the more megapixels, then by all means, the Canon EOS R is still an amazing camera to buy in 2023. It just will actually hold you back a little bit but it's a great entry point to get into the Canon RF world. I done it, I didn't regret it, and I absolutely love this camera. If you're a first time buyer, this might be the camera for you. The Canon R8 might be the cam camera for you. If you've got the budget, the Canon R6 Mark II is probably the camera for you because it's one of the best hybrid cameras on the market. So if you did enjoy this video and found it helpful, why not hit that subscribe button to see more videos on Canon gear, just Canon in general, photography, videography, news on camera gear anything like that hit that subscribe button and if you actually did enjoy this video you actually might want to see some more hidden features on the canon r6 mark ii right here that actually are very very cool and it actually makes the camera way way better so if you are interested in that video to actually see what else the canon r6 mark ii has to offer make sure you click this video next